The Swiss Queens Wednesday series is part of the FIDE 100th anniversary celebration. The 3 plus 1 Blitz tournaments take place every Wednesday on ChessArena.com with a $1,000 prize fund per tournament. Swiss Queens Wednesday is open to all title female players, including arena titles too. Congratulations to the winners of the fourth edition. Gune Mamadzada, Alexandra Costinha, Valentina Gunina, Mary Arabidze, and Natalia Buska. With more than 400 games to look at, we spotted brilliancies, blunders, and moments definitely worth highlighting. King H2, and that right there is a blunder! That is a blunder! All right, guys, we have a nice position here. This game is Alexandra Costinha versus Valentina Gunina in round eight. So this opening was actually some type of ready or King's Indian attack as uh, Alexandra Costinha, especially in faster time control. It's very flexible, but something she's been playing a lot. And here we actually reach this position after knight takes g2. So knight takes g2 happens, right? Of course, you can take this knight back. And now what happens here is actually Rook takes e8 check. So obviously we need to take back and queen takes e8 from Valentina Gunina. Costinha says queen takes g2. Obviously you can take with the king too as well. And we have ourselves some type of queen in game where basically in fact, at some point in this game, there was a draw available um, for Alexandra Costinha, but she wanted to play on. She said no draw, draw what, right? So of course this queen can swing in already right here to the e3 square, which is exactly what happens. Queen e3 check. And okay, cool, you know, the queen, is uh it's very active is actually attacking not only the pawn here right but also the king as well and things that you do want to understand is that in queen in games well, a lot of times they can be draws because of how many checks are available especially with open kings on the board so what happened after queen e3 check queen f2 which is very logical and after queen takes h3 okay we have the same amount of pawns here and the best basically way of playing this is just kind of shuffling the queen around to block all of the checks the queen is nicely defending the d4 square right now and the a2 pawn at the same time the queen is going to have to check maybe here and allow a queen to go back for this pawn to even be captured at, at any given moment so that's kind of not going to happen like almost ever here right so you know queen can try to swing around do what he can to try to get some checks in but what happened was queen to e2 alexander kuzniuk still playing on round eight trying to really win here in fact the top score was eight and a half in this tournament so after queen e2 there was queen g3 check uh, little tickle tickle see what you're gonna do after queen g3 check queen g2 blocking with the queen after queen f uh, e1 check right then there was a uh, king h2 which was not the best in fact what you're supposed to play here is actually queen to f1 right and keep blocking with the queen no matter what because if you block with the queen your queen is able to defend some crucial squares that you actually need it this pawn has to stay on the board because this pawn is connected to this pawn as well and then we may have ourselves a very bad end game for white if we lose both of these pawns so what happens is king h2 and that right there is a blunder that is a blunder because you lose a pawn immediately queen h4 check thank you appreciate the generosity here on national television right oh my goodness that is a pawn that is a pawn and it's most likely coming with check if you go king to g1 obviously your king g1 is going to come with check queen h3 may be some type of move but the king can run around this way like this and this right but what happens is queen h3 we're going for that boom i take a pawn okay check i get out of the way okay takes but that's not a check i take another pawn now black is up a pawn there are some ways of course engine like very hard to to even see this you're down a pawn this is also a three plus one blitz game very difficult for white so queen f7 happens and here we go here goes the check erosities after queen e5 check king g1 there's another check on g5 and a huge it well okay i guess there's no way around this anyway it's no matter where the king goes you're going to trade queens you go to the f file there's a queen trade with with queen f6 you go to the h file there's a queen trade with a check first and a queen g6 right which is a really nice sequence here and exactly that's exactly what happened in fact after the king h2 move and after king h2 boom check once check twice check three times but of course after takes we take and then king f4 and this is a lost in game for the white pieces here as alexander kuzniuk is now going to go down in this game with the right technique which valentina gunina is very good at she's placed every single queen's wednesday valentina gunina has won some money somebody 
gotta take her down no in fact she's actually playing excellent chess so after king f6 a4 g5 right and we're just gonna fast forward very clinical right you know very clinical easy get the king involved we get opposition you can't move um, either of these pawns here well okay you can move this one but if you move it we're just gonna capture right and this one's over king f1 one last move king h2 and that was a resignation great game from valentina gunina placing again in this uh swiss queens wednesday Okay, in our next game here, this is round eight with our winner, Gune Mamazada versus Nana Zagnitze. So, uh, Gune had white here. And in this position, this was actually a Sicilian, um, you know, something very sharp. After queen takes d5 from Nana here, the queen is actually obviously lining up on this diagonal with a queen g2 mate if the queen on e2 moves away any given moment type thing, right? But what happens is, okay, cool. I have it defended right now. G2 is actually defended right now. So what happens is, is white goes rook F D1 and says, we don't care about any of this right now because we have our own type of things maybe brewing here. Maybe now, of course, bishop B5 is not gonna be any good right now because the queen takes B5. So Nana says, oh, cool. Yeah, I see the move you're making, you know, very clever, but you don't have any real discoveries yet because you just don't like there's just nowhere to move the bishop very good so after castles now there's a problem right now on the board after castles what is the move here pause the video if you need to to try to figure out what did gune play in this position if you found the move f6 you are 100 correct f6 is a big boy aka big girl move this is very very strong f6 is opening up what guys let's take a look the bishop on the diagonal look at this boom bishop takes h7 that is going to pick up the queen you're also attacking the bishop at the same time yikes what a disaster you're actually losing material already after f6 bishop takes f6 and then uh she uh, nana chose this route of course she says look okay i'm gonna lose some material so i'll lose it by getting a lot of material back because i'm getting a pawn at bishop and the rook here right so bishop takes h7 king takes rook takes d5 all right cool and bishop takes and then we take a piece count well, at least you know take stock oh cool you know at least i got two rooks and two bishops temporarily after queen d3 check give me one of those i'm taking this whether you like it or not i'm gonna win a bishop i'm gonna be up some material clearly winning just gg everywhere now of course there is going to take some uh precision here and some accuracy but white is 100 percent winning after queen d3 check there was an e4 move after the e4 move right which is blocks the pawn i mean blocks with the pawn we just take now we're even even material or key the amount of pieces we should say right queen bishop rook versus bishop rook rook but that's not going to be the same amount of material in fact as a piece is obviously move different we have an extra queen and you do nods right so this is going to really decide the game let's see the rest of it bishop takes b2 attacks the rook we move away get out of danger attack the bishop next move um bishop f6 happens so bishop f6 then bishop over the d4 make a light little trade 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 rook a e8 and at least our our only hope is pushing this pawn through but that's not going to work queen e3 uh, rook e6 rook over to c4 lots of moves here left so we're just going to fast forward rook f8 rook c7 hitting the f7 pawn h uh, king g8 then h3 more of a waiting move see what you're going to do rook f6 rook c4 attacking the e4 pawn already okay rook f to e a4 happens g6 h4 with ideas of maybe playing stuff like h5 king g7 a5 gaining some space um black is going to run out of moves at some point rook a to e rook to c8 now we're taking the back rank here trades will favor us so we would love to trade the rooks rook e5 h5 right nice little move here just an inclusion to see what happens of course we want to open up some lines rook takes h5 does happen now that's calling the bluff but then queen d4 check with some decisive threats, obviously on the back rank, but of course you can't even go there. So of course the, the move was rook over to e5. Defending f6 would make some more weaknesses. Also a move like queen to d8 would be very, very scary for the black pieces. So Nana decides to block with the rook and then rook c5 happens, which automatically is attacking this, this rook here, right? And also we have the x ray through here. So lots of problems. So f6 happens, never play f6 as Feingo says, so after rook takes, rook takes, queen a7 check. King goes out the way, boom, we take. Now we have a pass pawn of our own here, right? Ready to queen as well. Also with our queen, this is going to be a thing too as well. Let's see what happens. E3, queen takes f6, boom. Takes, and here we go. Check. And can you find the move? 
check there it is oh no it hurts oh my goodness there it is that's gg that's gonna end it on the spot after king f4 queen takes a5 e2 and then we can go queen d2 check you could do anything that stops this queen from queening king to g4 and queen takes e2 and what do you do oh in fact you lose the game here as gunei was able to win very very strong game here hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and you're watching on the next one we asked dana Riznis ozola her thoughts on the swiss queen's wednesday initiative <laughs> FIDA does celebrate 100 years anniversary this year and uh, we will be having various um, activities so that to try to reach not only um, uh, each member of the chess community but uh, we want to also somehow get chess and get FIDA outside the, the borders of the very nice but comparatively so small chess, uh, chess world itself. So one of the initiatives uh, is indeed the FIDA chess relay that uh, uh, started now from India and will travel around the world and uh, land in um, the World Chess Olympiad in uh, Budapest this year so the next uh, the following uh, locations will be uh, uh, Canada Morocco uh, Kazakhstan Paris France uh, uh, UA uh, and several other uh, other locations um, and this way we want to not only have some you know uh, celebration of the torch ceremony itself but we want to create around uh, around the, that uh, that torch relay um, uh, nice activations that would be attractive to non-chess players as well to their communities to their politicians to their decision makers and uh, and uh, ce celebrities <laughs> so that they see oh hmm, chess is kind of cool uh, and uh, worth to be so supported besides that there will be um, various other activities for example 20th of july i urge each and every chess player to find an opportunity uh, online on chess.com or lee chess or over the board uh, in especially uh, organized uh, locations, we'll try to mobilize all the federations to support this initiative to be, become part of, uh, of the world uh, Guinness record attempt. We want to make the uh, global uh, record of the most uh, chess games played in 24 hours. And uh, that's a great opportunity, I think, for everyone to uh, be part of it. Yeah, so it's not that difficult open your computer or go to the locally organized tournament and play a game that will be counted and uh, we will uh, be then able to tell the stories how huge chess is now i have a dream i have a dream that one day uh, a female chess player uh, will be playing the world chess championship match and uh, she will become a champion uh, many of my colleague colleagues are are questioning this dream of mine but i know that the, the day will come but for, the, for that of course women themselves as well need to boost their self-confidence and believe in that that this is possible and those who are now the leading chess players they need to encourage the younger girls the younger players that yes 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 this is possible you see Yuri Polgar, uh, other chess players who have already demonstrated that with uh, the fighting spirit, with work, with talent, with um, support from the surrounding people, starting from families, trainers to their governments, it is possible to become uh, not only one of the best players in the world, but the best player of the world. Don't miss out on your chance to participate against the world's best. See you next week for the following edition of the Swiss Queens Wednesday. Visit chessarena.com for more information.